Equipment technology in all sports has evolved over the years, and bowling is no different. Bowling ball technology has changed significantly through the years, with hard rubber balls being the norm throughout the 1960s, followed by plastic, Mark Ross. then urethane, and then reactive resin bowling balls starting in the early 1990s. Each breakthrough in covered technology led to more hook potential for the bowler. He gets a kick, yes he does! To me, it's just been a natural progression. Uh, the manufacturers have been competing against each other, making better and better products uh, to stay either on top or get to the top of the marketplace. And so for me, everything's just been organically created uh, within those competitions. And the other piece of it that's important to note is the consumer has been consuming these goods. Right? As a consumer, we want to bowl better, and so we want to have the best product or the one that strikes the most, and so we demand that. The inside of the bowling ball, referred to as the core, has also evolved significantly, all for the purpose of creating more hook potential for bowling balls. For a bowling ball, we have, just say, a 16-pound bowling ball. <clears throat> I can either take something real heavy, put it in the middle of the ball to get the 16 pounds, or I could put a foam in the middle and move the weight outside, and that would be a high RG when the weight's out. Cover heavy would be high RG, center heavy would be low RG. The main byproduct of all this extra hook is that bowling center owners have to put more and more oil on the lanes. In fact, according to studies conducted by lane oil manufacturers, over the last three decades, the average amount of oil on a given lane has tripled, and the trend is projected to continue for the foreseeable future. One of the most amazing things about USBC is, is we really are a product of our, our governance structure. The members have a voice in how we provide legislation into the rules. And the board has certain areas that they certainly govern and then, you know, in this area, uh, the Equipment Specs Committee holds delegated authority. And so our job here at the staff level is to make sure that uh, the folks that are making the decision have all of the pertinent information and data. And so we put all the research together and all the information from the consumers, the pro shops, the bowling proprietors, the manufacturers, and then we get into a room and inevitably decisions are made. The two main areas of focus for this particular technology study were the impact of cover and core technology and whether the current direction is in the best long-term interest of the sport. Everybody's just doing their job. I mean, you know, when you think about you know, chasing a product, somebody has a, a, a good product and someone brings it in and tests it, and they, they try to make a, a better product and then it sells and you know so that's just a, a continuous effort at USBC we continue to follow that over time and measure the whys and hows of those products and look again towards you know what it should be and more importantly is it in the best interest of the sport long term and if it is we just keep motoring towards it um, and if it isn't we tap the brakes and take a look.